there's nothing beneath me to do, okay? Which hopefully it's after some of these things that you'll see, um, you'll be like, oh my god, he was really being serious about that. So, I'm Larry Chang, and who's contacted me in a person-to-person -person message, either via email or via Facebook or via whatever? Okay, cool. So, hands up. And who's, who's contacted me person-to-person? I just sent you a text message. Okay, <laughs> so, like, met you. Half the room. so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as many, uh, just try to get you guys as comfortable as possible reaching out to people, contacting people, and interacting with older people. And I'm going to make the outlandish goal before we start, okay, which is I want this session, okay, this interactive workshop to be your ROI, your return on your investment, okay, for your entire time here for your first year. Who's a first year? Okay. So for your first year. Is that an outlandish goal? No? So you guys, you know, okay. You'll just be able to meet it. Okay. These are some of the things that I want to go over, okay, which is you guys are all academically smart. I want you guys to incorporate a street smart component to it, okay? And I'm going to open up a window into how the world works. Okay, in the traditional working world, where where um, just how it is that people get stuff done, how to reverse engineer uh, a great result. Okay, and that's some of the things, and I'm going to put it under the the mantra of being street smart. So when I say the word street smart, what do you guys think of hustling on the street? <laughs> okay. Street smart. You can just write off. You don't have to raise your hand. Well, someone who's quick on their feet, like they, they know when to respond to a situation with like verbally. Like they don't just keep quiet. Who's taking notes for this? Because I'll comp a hundred dollar fresh gift card, okay, to the person who blogs the results of this. Is that crazy? I want you to have a return immediately. I want micro sums of money, okay, to, to, to transfer. Okay. So who wants the blog? Wants to be the official. John wants to blog. <laughs> okay. Blog okay. okay, perfect. Um, and somebody remind me to talk about how do you blog and cover pre cover events? Um, <clears throat> street Smart. So when I say the phrase Street Smart, what do you guys think of? Use car salesman. Okay, use car salesperson. Probably didn't go to great school, probably makes a decent amount of money. What else? Street Smart. No allowing yourself to get screwed over by people. Okay. Savvy. Like that. Clever. Clever. Good. Street smart. What else do you guys think of? Well, do you guys who haven't spoken of yet? So when I say Lie street. Well. Lie well. Interesting. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Or maybe uh, in a more positive light in this setting, catching other people lying and how to catch people lying. Street smart. Street smart, street smart, street smart. When I say street smart, you say... People skills, just in general. Okay. What about you guys? So when I say street smart, to get into nice places. Perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> Holding out on us. Okay. Uh, connections to get into places. And one of the things I desperately want to talk about is how do you network at a party that you are not invited to? How do you network <laughs> at a party that you are not invited to? So some of my background and the reason I'm so passionate about this is that my dad went to the school in the Boston area, uh, MIT. His three older brothers, they all went to Ivy schools. Those guys, and him and his older brothers, got mentorship and tutelage, okay, from my uncle Rudy. My uncle Rudy's a random white dude who's CEO of this company called Pure Chain, okay? His degree was barely in high school. My dad picked up knowledge from him, and look, Mr. Cameron just walked in. Hey. Um, so I'm the guy who not only helps you get an internship, okay, I give you leads while I'm talking and I'm going to bring up a person who actually can give you an internship. Have you guys heard of SSE Labs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well Cameron started it. <laughs> so that's my plus one for speaking because you will never see a less qualified speaker speak to you ever at Stanford. Who believes that in their heart? Well, it's true. Uh, thank you for not raising your hand, okay? But it is true. But the reason that I get access where I'm able to co-teach a class with uh, two PhD candidates, with uh, Anne Mirko and Rebecca Huang under uh, Professor Tom Kosnick, is because some of these street smart things and being street savvy work. And, 
And that's what I'm trying to expand on here. So who's got a question or a thought or some feedback? Or do you want me to just keep launching into to, to street smart stuff? Do you openly admit to people about your background or do you like, um, uh, in terms of like, if you think you're less qualified than people? You mean, do I, am I trying to be transparent with it? Yes. Yeah. I, I think I... Like when you're meeting people, you... Yeah. But I think, because I think people over extrapolate my qualifications, but yeah, I just try to... Have you seen the Duck9 website? I mean, it's retarded looking. Have you seen my Facebook picture profile? Well, I just recently changed it, but it was a purple bear. I think <laughs> a purple bear doesn't convey, you know... Uh, it conveys approachability. It does not convey knowledge and substance. Um, so yeah, I try to be uh, upfront and open with that. Other questions? Let's launch into how to network at a party that you were not invited to, okay? Now when I say how to network at a party that you're not invited to, who is quasi-nervous about being illegitimate? Nobody is? Okay. So I have this technique where you go from crasher to VIP. Okay. And here's and here's specifically some of the things that that you want to list out and you almost want to do it in a checklist. Most people that ask me about these things, they say, uh, what's the one thing that you did? And the one thing that I did is the 40 little things that I did. It's never the one big thing. So one of the best ways to get in to a party that you were not invited to is to add yourself to the party's wait list and to physically be there if you can show up five or ten minutes early okay before the event starts you don't want to be casually late you don't want to be fashionably late you want to show up slightly before the party starts now that makes sense to people right where you want to get that party going initially when you're talking to the gatekeeper initially when you're talking to the gatekeeper you want to own up to the fact that you are not an official, the invited person to that party. And you want to try to add yourself to the wait list. That's maneuver number one. Because what happens is when you add yourself to the wait list, you're adding more cachet to that party. And you want to get your little snippet down. Some people call it an elevator pitch. But getting your snippet down of, hi, I'm John, I'm a freshman at Basis, and I'm here to check out your event. I would, did not officially properly RSVP, but if you could find it a way for you to add me to the wait list, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, or some summary of that uh, synops, where you're offering to be put on the wait list. Also, if you're trying to go from Crasher to VIP, you want to pre-network that event. And specifically, um, during dinner, we were talking about how to uh, get access to a party that you're trying to get into. And pre-networking event works specifically with, with reaching out to that person either via email or via a Facebook message where you're trying to, to open up and preview your stated purpose for going. Okay. And typically, when you're talking about like going into a party, we're not talking about getting into a social party. We're talking about a work party that's got a semi-work purpose. Okay. And then Adam went to a thing earlier today. You want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, um, Larry invited me to go to the Venture Beat conference. And um, first mistake is make sure you look at what you think your ticket is. <laughs> so I had a thank you card, or Larry gave me a blank thank you card. I thought it was a ticket. <laughs> so I handed it to the guy, and he's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But then um, it was cool, and I met some people there, and it was helpful. Um, you're very gracious for sharing, but I mean, you did a couple things well, too. Do you want to go over some of those that you did well? Um, I helped, like, I stayed around like the volunteering desk, and I spoke to some of the venture beat people, and so I met like the director of sales, and I was talking to her for a while, and then I got her card, and she told me to email like Matt also. Okay, Matt, the, the bench beat editor. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and then also Dan Ha, who's the managing director of SSE Labs, who works with Cameron, uh, facilitated you getting a comp. Getting a comp is not impossible. Okay. One of the also another way to cheat to, to go from crasher to VIP 
is to blog or pre-blog their event. It is almost cheating to pre-blog because most people don't have the, the wherewithal to spend the 15 minutes to post a blog post. And this is the cheat post blog post, three paragraphs, two pictures, one video, okay? You don't have to post it on your own blog, you can post it at whatever blog. Three paragraphs, two pictures, one focus. The first paragraph, if you guys wanna jot notes, super helpful way to save you access, money, uh, getting into stuff. The first paragraph is you want to summarize what it is that event is. Second paragraph is your intention with that event. Third paragraph is your opinion of that event. Three paragraphs, two pictures, one focus. And you're pre-blogging this event so that when companies do the Google search of their own name or do a Gmail update, they see their own name of their conference, the name of their party, the name of the thing that they're trying to get into. If you guys think that I legitimately got into startup school the first time I went, the time that I went three or four years ago, I did not. But then I wrote an article afterwards on GigaOM called Nine People That You Meet at Y Combinator Startup School. Blogging is a hugely easy way for you guys to get access to events. Next thing you wanna do, we're still on networking a party that you're not invited to. Next thing that you wanna do is you wanna seek out the host. Typically what happens when you get in and crash, you maybe invite one or two friends, you eat the free food, and you drink the free uh, stuff that they've got there. Do the opposite of those things. Don't invite your friends, okay? Seek out the host and specifically get your elevator pitch ready for the host, which is, hi, Cameron, thank you for uh, hosting this event. I'm Larry Chang, I'm actually crashing your event. What you are? Really? Who are you? I'm John, and I'm a freshman at Basis, and I read about your event on VentureBeat because it was blogged on. And I just wanted to come over and say hi and say thank you. And then what you're doing with that host is most people either don't say hi to the host or they never say bye to the host. And by, by, by reaching out, you've got a chance then to be a VIP where the host says, oh, interesting, you went to Basis, um, have you met Ricky? Have you met Richard, the guy who started it? And then, so you're able to, to then reach out and make a connection. And also, you guys are in such a hugely advantageous position because you're all freshmen. And people love freshmen. I love freshmen. I mean, I'm super <laughs> happy to be, you know, connecting with freshmen. Um, and are you a junior? Are you a junior? No, sophomore. Are you a sophomore? Okay. <laughs> uh, we first met at the E145 mixer. Yes. I just, I just showed up with Kevin. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Another tip for, uh, for crashing a party is sending a follow on thank you card, thank you gift. And with Adam, I gave him the thank you card so that way he would mail it in later. <laughs> he thought it was the ticket, which is extra funny because Dan's looking at. Yes, the thank you card that was blank. And I'm the guy who gets Dan his thank you gift too, and he saw it and he knew he made the connection. That's just funny. But you can reach out and do that. So I'm going to transition that, okay, to how do you follow up from an event? Okay, so let's say you crashed it, and let's say you you transition. How do you follow up that event? Okay. So what are some ideas for how you guys follow up after you guys go to something? Okay. Um, email. Okay. What happens when you, you, okay, other people, how do you follow up? Send a physical thank you note. That's awesome. Blog. That's awesome. Blog. That's awesome too. You use social network on Twitter or Facebook. Yes. Older people, okay, older people, they view a tweet, okay, as important from a kid coming from Stanford. They view a tweet as importantly, as valuable as traditional press. Older people love Twitter. They love Twitter mentions. It's the strangest thing. I have no idea. Even from a person who's got you know, 40 followers or fewer. This is uh, Steph. She was um, a person at last year's uh, How to Get an Internship talk. And she actually ended up getting an internship. So that's why I was inviting both Steph and Cameron. So to give examples and specific things. So sit and uh, we're gonna do like 10 more minutes of me and then we'll go into a small panel. Um, following up via email, okay, I've got a handful of uh, bullet points uh, for how to follow up via email. 
Most of the times what happens when you go to a great school is you don't pester an email and constantly hit that email. You hit it once and then you stop after there's not a response. Email is a campaign. Email, and so Cameron, so let's say I'm uh, a, a candidate that's gonna be submitting a company in the SSE. Uh, initially, they email once and then you don't respond. Well, you would respond, but let's say you didn't respond. Well, I get like 200 emails a day, so. Perfect. It is annoying. Okay, it is annoying. <laughs> Things do get lost. Things do get lost, okay. Now what would you, how many emails can I send you before you view me as annoying? As a student entrepreneur, as a sophomore? Well, actually, the first, if there's like two or three follow-ups, then I'm actually really thankful because I'm like, oh shit, I messed up. I didn't follow this person because I just got lost. Um, if it's, um, one person did this one thing, which was actually really creepy, don't do. This actually went into my room and put a note on my desk. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to choose you guys now, obviously. But um, don't do that, but definitely follow up with email if people don't get back to you. Like, there's, there's no reason why, if someone's ignore, someone shouldn't ignore you. That's a huge point. I mean, what did you guys get as a nugget out of that? That's a huge nugget. What did you guys get out of that? You can email them two, three, four times. And that's a person who gets a couple hundred emails a day. You can email them two, three, or four times. Not the same day, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about that. 24 hours at least. Yes, space them out. Space them out. Another hack for if you're following up via email that I use, put your cell phone number in the subject line. Put your cell phone number in the subject line. And uh, put their cell phone number in the subject line, too, if you have it. Put their cell phone number in the subject line. The reason you're doing those things is, one, it busts spam, and two, it's an immediate call to action. Because the person who's uh, emailing you, who emails back, they're not going to do a two-paragraph ping back. But a lot of times, if you've got their, they're checking out PDA, they'll just click the call. Uh, following up via email, I know, it's a hack, isn't it? Um, following up via email, uh, waves. And if you do get their email, uh, and you don't have a reason to contact, um, ask them questions. Ask them, hey, what should I be reading? Write these down, because I know that these seem like they're really obvious to do. They're really easy to do. They're easier not to do it. Um, email, follow up. Oh, a piece of nugget morsel of news, okay? If I'm in a room, okay, and somebody's talking about wildfireapps.net, okay, I'll just ping Steph, or uh, Elaine, or um, Victoria, and be like, hey, I just heard really good stuff about your guy's company. And people love getting that little snippet of, of news that's pertinent to them that was something that you overheard and you directly contact them and say, hey, I heard something good about your company. That's a nice thing. And then people, you want to be the bearer of good news. And that's a little cheat to reach out and to get them top of mind. I don't love adding them as a Facebook friend right away. I love hitting their email. And I also love this for a method of emailing, which is kind of, well, it's just funny. Invite them to stuff at Stanford, okay? One, if they do come, okay, they'll never find it because stuff on campus is sort of hard to find. And two, VIPs, they love to say no. And they love to say, oh, well, you know, a bunch of Stanford people invited me and stuff. Can't make that. But they feel so important. And it gets you to the top of mind. Now, talking about internships specifically, which is the, the, the reason for this meeting, is it is possible for you to plan three years of internships in sequence, okay? And let's say you meet a person or you have an idea for your goal internship. Who's got an idea of a goal internship? A couple of people. Awesome. Okay. More than half of them awesome. As, as hard as it was to get into Stanford, it is much, much easier, okay, to hack three awesome internships in sequence. Let me repeat that. As hard as it was for you guys to get into Stanford, okay, spending a fraction of that effort to get three awesome internships, hugely beneficial. And here are your sequence of, of internships. Specifically finding an executive, specifically finding an executive and, and, and putting waves of communication to get mentorship from that executive. Who's seen Wall Street, the first one? Oh my God. <laughs> Two people, really, how many people have seen Wall Street? Three people, four people? Okay, 
you gotta rent this movie, Wall Street One. <laughs> Bud Fox shows up to Gordon Gecko's office, okay? Recite the speech, remove your name, your name's Bud Fox. <laughs> The guy that you're trying to get a job from, the girl that you're getting, trying to get a job from, job from, his or her name is Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gecko, I've read all about you in NYU Business. So it would be Victoria Ransom, I've read all about you in Harvard Business and Stanford Business. I've dreamt of one thing, and that is to do business with a person like yourself. Okay, now, who thinks that that's just over the top kiss ass, kiss butt? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, okay, after he says, really, seriously, if it's got any hint of genuineness, okay, is that a word? <laughs> Genuineness, completely we'll does work. Because, because, you know, Wildfire App is a cool company, and the, the, the purpose that it serves, and on down, it does seem over the top, but it does get that person's attention, and would get you then to say, well... Tell me about you. So, so specifically when in the movie Wall Street, then he's like, okay, well, what do you got for me? And then what you got for them is one area that you have expertise. Hey, I was looking at uh, your guy's thing and I was wondering if you guys have a person who's researching embedding videos into email marketing and Facebook messaging. Do you have anybody that's working on that? Using FBL markup language, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, why? Well, I've been sort of working on a pet project, and I was wondering if maybe you're the person to talk to about this, or maybe it was somebody else. If you could introduce me to one of your assistants, or one of your lieutenants who handles this, I'd be really appreciative. Well, I, I think I'll just talk to you about it. That sounds like an internship. A three-month project that you're going to be doing something that's specific, that you can help that one person with. Everyone's talking about how organizations are getting super flat, okay? Managing an older person, managing an older person, and getting that older person to respond to emails by pelting them regularly and micromanaging your boss is something that you would not think would happen, but it's actually really possible um, and very probable. And that's one of the techniques that I believe that you can use to get an internship. You guys have my cell phone number, so reach out. My email is just larry at larrychang.com. And with that, I want to bring up Stephanie and Cameron and um, have a mini panel where we can talk about specific granular details, the nitty gritty, on getting an internship. Hello. So Hello. Cameron's in the middle, Steph's on the right. <laughs> Larry likes being really close to me. <laughs> Um, I get the first two questions, or maybe the first one, and you guys will get uh, questions two through X. So, if you guys were to start right now to get an internship and you guys were freshmen, what are some things that you guys would do? Um, so, first of all, I'd figure out what field I want to go into. Um, so, if you, if you know what internship you want to get, then email the CEO. Easy. You say you're a Stanford student, say you want to, you know, do some research on them or just talk to them and get to know something about their company, um, and they will take a meeting, um, unless they're really busy. Um, so, for the most, but there's no harm in it. There's no harm in actually going and doing that. Um, if they don't respond, then email, I mean, one of your professors that might know them or find out someone who might know them, just in the investment industry or wherever, email them to get a meeting with them. And I don't know if Larry went over this, he probably did, but when you email these people, you ask for a five minute phone conversation. I mean, did you go over all that stuff? So you ask for a five minute phone conversation. That's it, you say a five minute chat just to like talk to them, just to tell them about yourself and ask them a few questions. That conversation will last 15 minutes. And then in that conversation, you can ask for a 15 minute coffee chat. Once you have that 15 minute coffee chat, that will actually be a half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, and then you have another conversation and, you know, those first few meetings you just get to know the person and then they'll answer whatever you send them. In addition to that, um, it also works to reach out through organizations you belong in. Like you all are in BASIS, right? And BASIS has pretty legit contacts throughout the startup community. So it's possible you could reach out through, who's the president, Ricky? No, that was last year. Jack. Uh, Indian and Jeff. Mm -hmm. could reach out through them. They probably.
happens sometimes, like you don't know which company you want to work for, but you know which industry you'd like to work for. And in those cases, it's also like really helpful to go to a lot of these Stanford talks and then use the exact same strategies, like go up to them afterwards, ask for their number, get their email, get those meetings. Yeah, and Larry talked about, I, I don't know, once again, I've heard you say a million talks, so um, I don't know if you already said this, but um, when you get a business card from someone, actually follow up with them, because most people don't. Um, they, no one follows up with people, and so the few people that do actually do get a lot of attention. And then also, so the second thing that I didn't add was look for opportunities on campus. So um, I'm going to put a quick plug in. SSC Labs, we have a lot of startup companies, really passionate entrepreneurs who are starting their own companies here. So um, if you're looking for you know, uh, an exciting group to join, there's a lot of companies starting up here. Um, so we'll actually be sending out um, you know, kind of pitches or uh, descriptions for internships with our companies. Um, and then just uh, keep the, even though this is horrible, just keep open to all the spam lists um, because there's constantly opportunities popping up. Um, so I know you mentioned like for example, three summer internships, like to make them awesome. Like, what do you guys vote as far as research or internships? Like, which one would you take part of? Well, the answer is really obvious for me. I never wanted to do research, no. so it was, for me, it was more of like which industry should I focus in? Because as a freshman, I was like, should I go into banking and consulting, or do I really want to do this like marketing startup thing? Um, so my first summer, I worked for like Ernst and Young in their M and A, and I was like, okay, that was pretty terrible. I now know I do not want to be an investment banker. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, my second summer, I worked for a marketing firm in Asia, and that was a lot of fun. But um, they were like one of those huge companies, Procter and Gamble, and I felt like I was missing something in terms of like hands-on action. I was like, all right, cool, that eliminates another like big set of jobs. And my last summer, I was working with the help of Larry. Actually, I got this job at Wildfire Interactive. Start with Palo Alto, they were amazing. And so, and then at the end of the summer, they made me an offer. So it's possible after graduation that's from headed. Victoria still talks about you. She does? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, but as far as the research stuff, um, I'd say go, the ne like, whatever your next steps are, go where you can uh, learn as much as you possibly can. And but you learn as much as possibly can by doing things over and over and by doing a bunch of different things. Um, so if you're really interested and really passionate about some sort of research, do it. Don't just do research just to do it. Um, because if you do research just to do it, it's just going to be, it's going to be useless. Um, at an actual internship, an actual company, you don't just learn whatever topic you're researching. You actually learn a lot of intangible skills with how to manage your boss, how to just work within a company, how to work within a team. Um, I mean, I would, Personally, I would go for the internship. Okay. But once again, everyone has their own preferences. So, um, for staff, I was actually really interested in having an internship in Asia, too. But I was thinking, hopefully, in the tech field. So how would you go about getting an internship abroad, like make sure that everything is secure there? Um, it's actually pretty hard to get an internship abroad, especially with um, like a technology company, since they don't really advertise to students at Stanford, right? So you really have to go after them. Uh, do you know what country you'd like to do it in? Because that's really helpful. Um, I was thinking Taiwan, China, or Singapore, with Chinese speaking. Oh. So for um, China, I know the Bing program has like engineering internships in Beijing, but those may be too like engineering heavy for your tastes. Um, if you want an internship in Singapore, the way I suggest you do that is get to know the community of like NUS students that are here at Stanford. There's actually like a huge bunch of them, and I'm like at members of ACES, and they have their own sort of um, exchange program. And it's through people. It's really like through people at this point. Thanks. I actually, one of my good friends here is from Singapore, so that was partially where I got the idea. You should do it. If you want to go to the Philippines, I'm from the Philippines. <laughs> I can pick you up. That's good for me. <laughs> I just want to go abroad and 